Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. As usual, before we get started, if you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so. I would greatly appreciate it. And also feel free to leave a comment and or suggestion down below about what you would like to see next. Currently, I am interested and willing to talk about anything from web development to Salesforce to now, I guess, blockchain since we kind of started doing that. But feel free to throw anything out there. I'm also considering getting back into uh, doing some kind of Python just for fun. So anyways, without further ado, let's jump into it. Previously, we talked about the basics of the batch, of the batch interface. And I think for today, uh, just to make it a quick video, I want to talk about how we can go ahead and schedule this batch to run automatically without us having to do anything. So let's go ahead and jump into that. You'll see here I made a brand new class. I just called it Supply Quantity Check Scheduler. Now, I don't think there is an official Salesforce naming convention guide out there. And while I'm sure online there are many that, that you can look up that are kind of as a, as a suggestion, most of the time when I've seen a scheduler, a schedulable class, like in a production environment, I've seen it named a couple different ways. One of them being what you're seeing here, scheduler, other one being job or schedulable or something along those lines to kind of denote, to denote to the developer that this is a class that will contain our schedulable code. Anyways, this is what I decided to go with for now and I think that works just fine. So to implement our schedulable class to basically automate our batch, all we have to do is implement the schedulable interface, which we can do so by saying implement schedule schedulable like so. And that's kind of a hard word to say. And the schedulable interface, as you can see here by this little error that we have now, it requires us to implement one method and that's just the execute method right there. So let's go ahead and do that. To do so, all we need to do is say public void since it doesn't return anything, execute. And inside here, we're gonna get the schedulable context, which kind of similar to the batch class, this is just a this is just an object that can contain some references to our schedulable. I don't think we'll be using them, but they're there if we need them. I'll just call this CTX. And then here we'll open up our, our method. And in here, all we have to do is essentially just call our batch right here. Pretty much how in the previous, I guess, episode, when we did our execute anonymous, all we did was we created an instance of our batch class. And for some reason, I don't have it here, but it looks something along the lines of, if I can go ahead and copy this very quickly, we created an instance of our batch by using the new keyword and then saying this, and next thing we did was we called the database.execute method, I believe, or uh, it was a execute batch method. And we did so by doing database.execute batch, like you see right there. And then pretty much in here, we just passed in the batch object we created. And then additionally, we had that secondary parameter that was optional. And that was just to kind of uh, control how many records could be processed at once by this execute method. And if we didn't provide a parameter right here like this, then I think it would execute 200 batches by default. So if we did something like this, that means it's going to execute 10 at a time until it's done. And like I said last time, this returns an ID, which you can use to either query or look at in the UI, well, which batch job this, this belongs to or Apex job this, this belongs to. And I guess what we can go ahead and do that, we'll just say, batch ID, batch ID equals that just to kind of grab it. But essentially this is all we need to execute our batch. And that's pretty much all our schedule is gonna need as well. So by pasting it in here, essentially what we're saying is this schedule scheduler class is gonna be responsible for kicking off this batch of ours. Now to actually get this to run, we can do so two different ways. We can do it through the UI, and also we can do it through code itself. Now, if we wanted to do it through the UI and we can kind of walk through it very quickly, let's jump into our backend. So let's go to setup. And in here, let's search for Apex classes. Click into that. And here we're gonna have this button called schedule Apex. So if we click into here, we should have this UI that basically allows us to create a job that can run at, at, at some frequency. And you know, we'll give this a name such as check quantity supply. 
something like that. And then our Apex class, we would just search for that schedulable, which we can see here. And then we can give it a frequency. Now, the reason why this is one of two, met of two ways of, of our scheduling our class right here is because this, while great and you know, it allows us to do it in a UI without any code, if you require any frequency that's, that's more complicated than this, well, then this UI doesn't do it for you. So then you would need to do it through code. And I guess we can jump into that too, right here. Basically, to schedule this class through code, all you will need to do is, kind of like how we created it in our batch, we would create an instance of the schedulable class, and then we need to create a cron expression, which I guess without getting too deep into it, it's just a string that's used to represent the time and date that you want the job to run at. And I'll even show you guys this nifty little website here that can help you build up that expression. Uh, we'll get that, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get into that in a second. And then, the third thing uh, we'll need is the name of our job. So let's, let's just jump into it very quickly. Uh, because I'm lazy, like always, I'll go ahead and copy this and we'll create an instance of our class. I'll just call this scheduler. Let's use a new keyword to create a new object like that. And then next, let's go ahead and create our cron expression. So we'll just use a string for that. And then I'll call this cron expression equal to some string. And then lastly, uh, the way we get this to kick off is by using the system.schedule uh, method. And that also kind of like the batch uh, execute batch method returns a, a job ID. So let's go ahead and get a string just to kind of save it in there, even though we're not even outputting it, but just know that it exists. And let's use system.schedule like right there. And you'll see here, like I explained earlier, there are three different parameters. The first one is the job name. That's just a string. Then we have our cron expression like right there. And then lastly, that's our actual object that we created from the class, which is our third, which is our third argument. So for the cron expression, like I mentioned earlier, there are many different websites that can help us create our cron expression. And you can see here that we can, there, there's more granular, granularity with it is what I'm trying to get at. You can specify you want it to run at every second, for a specific minute or a specific hour, or a specific day, month, year, I think I think you get the point. So like I said, there, there's many more options than what the UI uh, back here offers us. Uh, I think for now, what I'm gonna do is, uh, at least on this website right here, you can scroll down and I'll show you some common examples. So like, you know, if you wanna run this every 30 minutes or every hour, every six hours, you know, you kind of get the point. I think what I'm gonna do is, uh, kind of going back to that example we had done in, that we had done in our batch uh, video, the requirement was to basically run it on Friday. And I guess I'll just use this one. This is kind of the closest one. It runs Friday at every Friday at noon. So I'll go ahead and copy this. And back in our dev console, I will go ahead and just paste this here like so. And that's basically all we need to do with this. We're telling this method that it should run basically every single Friday at noon. And what it's going to do is it's going to execute this execute method right here. And it's just going to create a, an instance of our, of our batch. So with that, let's go ahead and give this a name. And I think I'll just go back here and kind of copy it. Now the name, this, you will be able to use it to identify it. If we go back into our setup and, and search for Apex jobs, you'll see here we have this Apex jobs link. If we click on it, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it appears here somewhere. And yeah, so let's go ahead and actually run this through and see what we get. So I'm gonna go ahead and execute highlighted right there and obviously this is not going to run today because it's not friday but what we can see here is if we refresh we now have a fourth entry right here the job type is scheduled apex you see the status here is queued and nothing has run yet because it's not friday but essentially the point is that on friday at noon this code will run so yeah just a very quick video i hope you guys have enjoyed this video and i'll catch you guys in the next one